the Greater Centerville Historians, organized in the year 2000. The purpose of the organization is to preserve the history of the Township of Centerville, Cleveland and surrounding area. Gerald O'Neill, Charlie Bauer, Richard Wiegand, and myself, Kathleen Sixel, were the founding members. In 1831, the territory south of Green Bay was sold to the U.S. government by the Native Americans who had title to the land. The consideration was the promise of a reservation in another state. The Township of Centerville was established in 1850. The township had a village called Centerville. The reason for the hamlet's original name of Centerville was, in the days of the Indians, there was a trail along Lake Michigan between Manitowoc and Sheboygan. This heavenly spot was exactly at the halfway mark, so the early white man gave it the name Centerville. In 1849, the village of Centerville was surveyed and laid out in lots and blocks. The village of Centerville was renamed Heika when the Postmaster General informed the village leaders that another Centerville was located in the state. When it became time for Centerville to be renamed, a judge in Manitowoc by the name of Albert Schmidt would take kids hiking. The judge said, you can't call a town hiking, so why not make it Heika? Thus, the village of Centerville became Heika. In the early years, Centerville had the vision of becoming a lake port. To encourage ships to dock there, two piers were built into Lake Michigan. Many German immigrants arrived by schooners and the village began to grow. The village had a brick factory, stores, schools, a Lutheran and a Catholic church, mill, saloons, blacksmith shop, and a fire department, and a brewery. When the brewery was built, the settlement began to flourish. But when fire destroyed the brewery, the largest industry, there was no longer a need for the harbor facilities. So ended this chapter of the development of Haika. Two miles west of Haika, another settlement known as St. Wendell began to grow. It had a Catholic church, a general store with a connected dance hall, and a post office was also located in the complex, a funeral parlor, and at one time a motel. With the clearing of the forest, tilling of the land began. This prompted the exporting of lumber and grains. The farmers of Centerville looked forward to the building of a railway since they had a serious problem transporting their products. In 1873, the Milwaukee, Lakeshore, and Western Railroad was built between the settlements of Heika and St. Wendell and was named Centerville Station. In 1880, Centerville Station was renamed Cleveland after President Rover Cleveland. Cleveland, at that point in time, owes its growth to the fact that the township of Centerville was a rich farming community and farmers from miles around would bring products to be shipped by rail or ship. The village of Cleveland had several grocery stores, a furniture store, a funeral parlor, several saloons, Lutheran church, hardware stores, several gas stations, newspaper, photographer studio, several car dealerships, cheese factory, several feed mills, livestock yard and lumber yards. The biggest business was the Cleveland Co-op, which offered many types of services. With the feeling of green crops, the farmers began dairy farming. With the abundance of milk, another industry began, cheese and butter making. Local cheese factories dotted the countryside. One-room schools were usually built near the cheese factories, so children would have a ride to school when farmers brought their milk. In 1958, Heika, St. Wendell, and Cleveland incorporated into the village of Cleveland. In 1968, the Cleveland Elementary School was built. The township of Centerville has seen many farming changes, but dairy farming is still the primary vocation. Today, Cleveland is known as the seat of Lakeshore Technical College, which offers an educational alternative to four-year colleges. An ancient proverb states, 
When an old person dies, a library burns to the ground. These words were the inspiration for organizing the Greater Centerville Historians. We hope to preserve as many memories as possible. We're here at the Saxon Cemetery in Centerville, uh, Wisconsin, and we have Mr. Charlie Bauer here, and he's going to indicate why we're here. Go right ahead, please. Yes, today is uh, May 10, 2008, and as our cameraman Jerry O'Neill said, we are located at the cemetery, and the cemetery is located east of Union Road, and it's south of North Avenue, which is also known as County XX. And our purpose today is to learn a little bit more about the, the history of the cemetery. We have some of the groundskeepers here, and we have some of the people that served on the board of directors. And they're going to go through a little bit more of the history. We've been here once before we, with the Greater Centerville Historians. We met here as a group, and we toured some of the cemetery, and we, we, we learned some about the cemetery. And we came back for a second visit to get some more information on it. Okay, very good. And we'll be introducing uh, the people that are here today who are attending our meeting and we'll get that taken care of too. Thank you very much, Charlie. Uh, we relocated our camera in the cemetery. We we're kind of on the east and south end and the building behind us is actually the building they use for the, conducting their meetings and as we're taping right now their meeting is being held they're having a, a, a business meeting here okay and once they conclude that their business meeting we will get a chance to interview some of them on camera here and have them explain exactly what was what is going on here at the cemetery okay very good and uh charlie just a kind of a loaded question for you do they also store lawnmowers and everything in there too? I see some articles I didn't look though. I didn't give it a real close look, but I would think that some of the lawnmowers would be stored here or some of the equipment would be stored here. Otherwise, they would bring them here just to, to All keep right. the grass. And you can see the grounds have been taken care of already. They're, right. They're very, very neat and clean looking. Okay. I'm just gonna pan here for a moment, Charlie. We may talk about a few other things as long as we have a few minutes while they're conducting their meeting. Okay, again, I'm with uh, Mr. Charlie Bauer, who has uh, helped me out again many times, and it was on short notice, but he joined me today for this uh, occasion. And he'd like to talk about the maybe the starting date of the cemetery and what we see in the background. Yes, according to this little booklet here, and, and we'll probably get into this a little deeper as the day goes on here, but the, the, the cemetery association here started back in 1879. Wow. So it is a pretty old cemetery here. Yeah, yeah. And uh, there's a whole bunch of dates and information in here, and we may be going through this, to, uh, or I have somebody from one of the committee here would read it on, into the camera here. Sure. And the other thing, if you, if you pan back here, this is the, the older part of the cemetery down at this end here. Okay. And, and we are at what end of the cemetery where this is located? This would be the, the northwest corner of the cemetery. Okay, very good, Charlie. And uh, the majority of the stones in here are of limestone. And that was very typical of the of the time frame that limestone was used. It was easy to carve the, the, the inscriptions in on the stone. Very good. Okay, yeah, we see. There's a few of them that we see broke off, and I don't know, there might be some missing also, apparently. Might have happened. But uh, it's hard to believe that that many years ago, they were thinking of this situation and apparently bought some land for that purpose. Okay, I'm with uh, Mr. Charlie Bauer, and he has uh, some things he'd like to point out. Go right ahead, please. Yes, as, as I look over the cemetery here, we're down in the older part, and traditionally, the gravestones would have been a flat 
and made out of limestone like this. I see. And, and the majority of them were this way. And that's, right. that's another reason why a lot of them just got broke off, just with time and probably with some juvenile vandalism or whatever. Sure. But if the camera would follow me around over here, okay. and I would think this would be the next change in the cemetery here, is where you see all these monuments, they're more of an opolis. Oh. And you can see they're all yeah. basically the same way there. Okay. They even have like a little spindle on the top of each of those uh, monuments. It's unusual too. Something like a like a uh, a fennel or a pendant. There you on, go. On the top there. There you go, Charlie. And then on the other side of the the, the blacktop driveway here, you can see there are more of the I would call them a, a billboard type. Okay. Gravestone there. And even like more granite too, right? Yes. And the, yeah, the stone also changed. As okay. The years changed. You went limestone to granite. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Okay, again, Charlie is at a location uh, different in the cemetery, and he'll tell us a little bit about the change in the stones. Yes, you can see the stones here. They're, some are the pink granite, some are the gray granite. And they're usually polished. Okay, and, good. And, and some of them have what they call a rock edge on it here. This, this rough shape looks like it's a rock shape. Okay. And uh, the, the, the engraving is much more clear. Uh, on this particular type of stone than they right. are on the older stones. Correct. Okay, very good. And they should stand up to the weather much better also. Much better because granite's a much harder rock than the limestone was. All right. Very good, Charlie. Okay, and with uh, Mr. Charlie Bauer, he'd like to point out some unusual monuments that he, we've come across. Yes, this statue of the young boy here is, is uh, Rick. This is his last name. Okay. And uh, it's nicely done. And I don't remember, but I we were told once where the statue was made for, for oh, this really? cemetery here. Yeah. And the inscription is on, on the on the east side of the stone here. Okay. And it's uh the big bold letters on the bottom is Rick R I E C K. Yep. And it would have been eighteen ninety nine. All right. And uh, was that an English or German writings? Uh, the writing is in German. Okay. The writing is in German, yes. All right, very good. And another one that's a little unusual in the cemetery, and we're looking at the back side of it, this one made out of, looks like firewood or cordwood. Oh, well, that is unique. Charlie, I'm going to take a different position for the view of that special stone there. I don't know if you, you captured on the bottom here, but that is in German. Okay. Mother and Vader would be mother and father. All right. On the bottom down in here. Yes. And it looks like a, I can read it, Franz Wimler? I would say that's what that says, yes. Yep. Okay. There's two of them buried here. All right. Franz and I can't make it out with all looking yeah. in front of the camera here. Lina? I'm going to go with Lina. Lina? Could have been, yeah, L.I. Okay, well, thank you very much, Charlie. Okay, I'm with uh, Mr. Charlie Bauer, and he noticed as we were walking through the cemetery here that uh, there was a whole row of uh, lower-type monuments. Go right ahead, Charlie. Yes, there's a, there's approximately eight of these stones here. I'm going to call them a, a pillbox stone. Okay. So it looks like a, a small pillbox, and it's basically all the same family. Okay. Don't and see this particular style of stone too often. No, no. And it starts out, it has what, two different family names, is that yes, right? There's a, a Yannick and a, a Bartle. Okay. On the stones here, different dates. And the further north you go, the older the dates are. Oh. As you come towards the camera, April of 1994. Okay. A lot of history in the cemetery. Yes, there is. Okay, we found a very unusual monument here, and Mr. Barr will give us more insight into this one. Yes, this is the tallest stone in the cemetery. Again, it's shaped like an opolis, and it's Carl Rick on the, on, the, on the name down here. All right. And according to the way it's laid out in front here, there's a, three different individuals that are 
Oh, okay. So it was sort of a family... Uh, this would be a, the family stone, I would say, and then okay. the, the small stones in front would be the individual stones themselves of, okay. of, of the person who resides here. Very good. Okay, we've come up the hill a little bit in the cemetery, and uh, Mr. Barber let us know where we're located and provide other information. Go right yes. ahead, please. The, the camera started off on the east end, and it's kind of panning the whole north side. And the reason we located up here, uh, I was going through this little booklet here, and there's a lot of information in here about the different things that the, the cemetery committee, different issues that they have to deal with. And one of the issues they had to deal with was right behind the pine trees in the back here yeah. is the Cleveland Sportsman Club there, where they okay. do a lot of shooting. And, and they were, on a, one of the meetings in here, they indicated that they would ask the club no longer to shoot when there's a when there's a funeral taking place here as a courtesy. Oh, okay. Which, which is a good thing. Which is thing a good there. thing, yeah. yeah. And I'm sure it, it might have happened at one time, uh, unbeknown, you know, and that type of thing. Yeah. But uh, they apparently, contacted them and requested it, and I'm sure it worked out well. And uh, they do have uh, services here for okay. the veterans on Memorial Day. Okay, very good, Charlie. And uh, I think, I, I read in here, I think there's about 25 veterans that are that are buried here. No, that's just like, I think that's what I read. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, okay. The flags are not yet in place, but we are in May. We're on May 10th here, and Memorial Day will be celebrated on the 26th of May. Oh, really? I didn't know that, Charlie. Yeah, they, they moved it up. They usually catch that Monday, the last Monday, and it's just the way it falls this year. Okay. For them. No. Very good. Very good, Charlie. You, you covered it all, I think, sir. Thank you so much. I'm with uh, Mr. Charlie Bauer, and we're looking through the Saxon Cemetery, and we came upon something here, Charlie. Go right ahead, please. Yes, we come across another unique-looking stone here. The, the top part here, it's, it's a, again, the pink granite. It's cylinder shape. Yeah. And then it's supported by these copper oh. brackets here sitting on top of the square part here. Okay. And, and you, can, you can knock your knuckles against it, mate. It is there. And it's been, yeah. it's changed over due to, uh, what do they call it, oxidation. oxidation. Thank oxidation you, Charlie. On there. Yes. Oh. Very good. Well, that's unusual. You don't see that. Okay, I'm still with Mr. Charlie Bauer, and he happened to notice as we were walking through the cemetery, there was unusual markings on these particular stones. Go right ahead, sir. Yes, we notice, especially on these taller opalus type stones here, that a lot of them have these little shivs of grain, or of wheat, I should say. Okay. Right in here. Yeah. And down at the bottom of the of the stone, yeah. this base is very familiar on quite a few, especially in this area here. here. Okay. The majority of this row, and the row behind the camera, it, uh -huh. it kind of goes down the, the whole row towards the... Okay. Towards the north, and the same on the next row over here, towards the east of the camera. Okay. I'll come back down to this one here. There's lots of detail on, on the stones itself. Even on the bases alone. On, on the bases, there's all sorts of decorations put in here. Is there any wheat uh, showing on this one, Charlie? Uh, there's, there's right in here. Right in there. Just right hold your here. finger there, and I'll yep. see if I can come in on it. Okay, you're right, Charlie. And again, the inscription is in German. Okay. So that kind of gives you the date. It gets it gets back there in time. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we're with a fine group of people here, and we're going to start out with our leader of our own group, and uh, she'll introduce herself and tell us a little bit what we're about today. Go right ahead, please. My name is Kathy Sixel. My address is 9716CTHX Newton, Wisconsin. And we're representing the uh, Greater Centerville Historians today. And we uh, just got done with the annual meeting of the Saxon Cemetery. And these are the board members and the members of the cemetery. Okay. Okay, I'll pan over here. And if you'd introduce yourself in nice and loud, please. I'm Mrs. Robert Lorfeld. We used to live down Cleveland Way. Okay. And my husband is buried here. All right. There's a spot here for me someday. Okay. And, and I'm just here to attend the meeting, okay. the meeting. Are you held hold any office at this point? I, no, I don't hold an office. Okay, very good. Thank you very much. And who do you have here, please? I'm Anita Classic, the wife of Roland Classic, which is, he's buried up here. 
Okay. Quite a lot. All right. And where do you live, please? 5962 County Trunk C, okay. Manitowoc. Okay. Very good. Thank you so much. And do you have an office that you're holding at this point? No. Okay. Very good. And who do you have here, please? My name is Arlie Haupt. Okay. And, and I live at N9478 Union Road, All right. Cleveland, Wisconsin. Okay. And I am a secretary of this cemetery association All right. since 1984. Okay, very good. Good. And who do you have here, please? I'm John Wiegan. I am currently the president of this cemetery association. Okay. I held the office since 1980 and was fortunate enough to be reelected today to another three year term. Okay, congratulations. <coughs> Easier for me than it is for the national candidates for president. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to campaign, huh? Right. It comes real easy. Okay. I live at 15322 South Union Road, Cleveland. Okay. Which is town of Centerville. All right. And I am <clears throat> also a caretaker up here with my parents. Okay. And we have a lot to be concerned about. We have many relatives buried up here. Okay. And would you want to give your parents' name, please? My parents, uh, Lewis and Mildred Wiegand. Okay, thank you. And uh, by the way, where do they live? They also live at 15322 South Union Road. Thank Cleveland. you. Okay, we have a young lady here and she'd like to indicate her name, please. I'm Diane Hesketh. I live at 9403 North Avenue, Newton. Okay. It's really just down the street. All right. Um, our infant son is buried here and okay. I am the treasurer of the Cemetery Association. Okay, well, very good. Well, I thank you very much for uh, uh, responding to our questions and I uh, hope you can stick around a little bit longer for some other additional things we may like to talk about in, with the cemetery. I am also uh, uh, fortunate enough to have a good buddy of mine, a neighbor, and he'll introduce himself too. I'm Charlie Bauer and if I may I would ask some questions here if it would be all right with the group here. First of all, is the cemetery just connected with the church or is this a, considered a, a church cemetery or is it considered a public cemetery? And who would like I'll, to I'll hold it? To I'll, okay. And your name again, please? John Wiegand. Thank you. Uh, this <coughs> cemetery used to have a Lutheran church on it. it or, was, okay. Uh, St. Peter's. It All was right. down on the, on the west end down there on the, of the cemetery. All right. And, but, and it was pretty much Lutherans buried up here. But <coughs> it, from the very beginning, established in 1879, was uh, brought into being as a private cemetery association. So there are people buried up here from other denominations as well, and that has always been the practice here. Okay, very good, thank you. Okay, we have our uh, leader of our Centerville Greater Historians, and she has a question. Go right ahead, please. I have a question for John. Um, was this affiliated with St. Peter Lutheran Church at one time? There was this little church over on the north side? Okay, I'll pan over here to the gentleman that will answer this question. Go right ahead, please. John Wiegand. The St. Peter's Lutheran Church was somewhere down on the uh, southeastern corner down there. Pretty, I, I'm not sure exactly where, but it was down on okay. the corner. It, well, it, it was a Lutheran church, but in most, so mostly Lutherans are buried here, but it, it was established as a private cemetery okay and as far as I know there have never been any restrictions uh, against burying anybody from any other denomination here it, okay it Very was good. more of a practice or tradition that Lutherans were buried here because the Lutheran Church was on okay the property and that's how it started but all right <coughs> it, it was not restrictive okay very good thank you okay I got a gentleman here who has some more questions go ahead please yeah I got a couple of questions here the first one the, the cemetery association started in 1879, but in this little booklet here I'm holding, it says the earliest gravestone is in 1861. So there's a discrepancy there on when the first grave was here and when it became an association. If, can anybody explain how that took, how that came apart? <laughs> okay, very good, Charlie. I'll pan over to John. You want to handle this one? John Wiegand. The church was built here in 1863, it was St. Peter's Lutheran Church. The cemetery started up here somewhere around that time. The earliest 
monument that we can read okay. was the person who was born in 1795 and died in 1861. There may have been some earlier ones here where the graves simply okay. are gone. It, it just got you know, taken away Okay. it was in such bad shape. All right. But <clears throat> it wasn't until 1879 that they actually began a, the cemetery association okay. as an organization All right. where they had a secretary treasurer, and I guess they call it chairman, now we call it president, Sure. where they had you know, okay. a board that oversaw things. All right. So that's why you, you have the discrepancy. Okay. Some of the early burials in this area yes. began somewhere around 1850. They actually took place on family farms. On your family farm? Uh, on, uh, Family farms in general. If oh. Infants died. They sometimes bury them right on the farm. We had several on our farm, so okay. they maybe didn't get the cemetery going right away when they started settling here around 1850. Right. Probably came a few years later. Okay. When they, you know, as people started dying off, they thought we better get a cemetery. All right. So. Okay. Uh, I'd like to ask a couple of questions in regard to the people that are in charge. Uh, could you tell us, uh, starting? Are you president, sir? I'm secretary. You're a secretary. You're the president. Okay, I'll work my way down a little bit. <laughs> anyway, your duties as being president. Well, one of my... Oh, okay. Go right ahead, sir. John Wiegand. Thank you, John. As president, well, I just fulfilled one of them. I had to run the meeting, but that's probably the easiest one. I am just one of three board members. I mean, the other ones, you know, I really have are of equal importance, secretary and the treasurer. Yep. I am the one that gets the calls, so to speak, when something needs to be done up here. Okay. Questions about <clears throat> somebody wanting to bury, bury a family member or buy a lot okay. or anything else that comes up in relation to the cemetery, work need being done up here. Okay. I'm the one that would be called. <clears throat> somebody dies, the funeral director will call me. Mm -hmm. I will be up here and see to it that the grave is marked off when, the, you know, when there's a burial, mm -hmm. so that the burial takes place in the right place. Yes. So that that's uh, my responsibility. I have <clears throat> pretty much see to it that you know the work gets done up here. Where mm -hmm. It's not a problem right now because my family is Helping does, out. Does the clipping and the trimming, so yeah. we, we know what's going on here. But okay. any other things that have to be done here, <clears throat> pretty much <clears throat> go through me. I don't worry much about either the treasurer or secretary. I mean, they take care of the responsibilities. <clears throat> okay. You know, I, I'm not worried about that. They, All right. Well, we'll move on down to the starting with here, maybe with the secretary. What are your duties, sir? My name is Arlie Hope. Thank you, Arlie. And I'm supposed to try and write the minutes of all our meetings. Okay. Now, I had a little help from a fine lady. Yes, Mrs. I see that. Wonder <coughs> I believe she put this together a little bit. Oh, I okay. use kind of a rough format always myself. Yeah. Okay. And she helped out to make it look more readable. Fine. Would you and like to read a few things from it? I would. If you'd like to know a little bit of the history okay. of this cemetery, these are very brief, very quick. That's fine. But uh, we can start at the beginning. By the way, June. before you start, sir, I'm sorry to interrupt. Does anybody need a chair to sit down for a moment? To, everybody's doing fine? Okay, great. Thank you. Sorry to interrupt you, Arlie. Go right ahead, please. All right. June 2nd, 1879, a meeting held of the so-called Saxon Cemetery Association, Township of Centerville. Franz Wimler acted as chairman. The purpose was to resolve issues. Appointed Ernest Dossler, Frederick Werner, and Frederick Hoon to prepare constitution and bylaws in conformity to the law as made and provided in the revised statutes of Wisconsin. These will be submitted at the meeting of June 16, 1879 for adoption. June 16, 1879. Recognition of the Centerville Cemetery meeting was in the Saxon School, which later was renamed Pleasant Hill. 
$32.31 was paid for one acre of land to Frederick Hoon and his wife, Johanna Christina Hoon. The cemetery meeting was to be held on the Pentecost Monday of each year. Okay. The Constitution was drawn up, which consisted of the preamble and ten articles. Ernest Stossler elected the first chairman. Carl Tapel was elected first secretary. Money is in the hands of Ferdinand Hoon, $32.31. Three trustees were named to handle affairs. Carl Tapel, a three-year term. Ernst Yenick, a two-year term. And Fred Fernand and Hoon, one-year term. In 1896, A.W. Fisher elected the board to replace Ernest Yenick. 1907, Otto Klesik elected to board to replace A.W. Fisher. 1910, Louis Wiegand elected to board to replace Ferdinand Hoon. 1913, William Hoon elected to board to replace Carl Tapel. 1923, the last time above that three names were recorded. Otherwise, it was just William Hoon. Okay. 1934, the first year minutes were written in English. Perpetual care introduced and unanimous vote to accept. Now, before this, all notes were to give written in German. Wow. And a very beautiful handwriting, whoever done all this, but I cannot read any of that. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it was in cursive, right? And it was beautiful. <laughs> okay. yes. In 1935, the June 10 Constitution changes to conform with perpetual care system. First changes occurred since 1879 Constitution was adopted. Going on in 1936, June 1st, a meeting held in the basement of the Lutheran Church in Cleveland. Association discussed the drilling of a well on property for water. Discussion was held regarding the outlay of the vacant lots and getting a new blueprint. In 1937, a well was drilled. Expenses for the year were $436.63. Association received $300 from Carl Rick and $300 from his daughter, Emma Rick, to help pay for the drilling of well. The remainder of money to be used for perpetual care using $5 each year for flowers on the Rick graves. 1940, September 4th, discussion regarding changing layout of the cemetery was discussed. It would save land. Oh. 1942, in September, only board was present. There were no other people here, just the board. It was decided to have meetings on Pentecost Monday. Okay. 1943, June 14th was Pentecost Monday, and it said the lawn clipping was done by the Wigan girls. Do you know who those might be, John? Just one second. We'll take a pause right there and see if Mr. <laughs> Wigan can add that. Yes, sir. John Wiegand. Well, there were two Wiegand families here. My aunts, you're talking about Wiegand girls, and across the road would have been their first cousins, uh, Kurt Wiegand family. I'm not sure exactly which ones were doing the clipping. It could have been some from each family. So there were two Wiegand families. There were several daughters in each one. Okay. So can, can you take a little guess at who you well, think? Well, it, it later on mentions Jeanette Wiegand. That was my aunt. So that would be one of them. And I think there might have been one from the other side of the road, one of the cousins. Okay. So All right. Very that's, that's where I'm just guessing. Very good, John. Thank you for providing that. Go right back to you, sir. I want to continue. Back to Arlie Hope. Arlie Hope. Thank and you, some Arlie. Some of these uh, <laughs> notes are just the highlights. They yeah. don't give you just too much information, it's, it's, but... We'll wonderful. follow along with a few more that we have recorded. Sure, wonderful. Uh, 
In 1944, May 29, the cleaning of the cemetery was done by Jeanette Wiegand. 1945, May 22, the cleaning and clipping of the lawn is still a problem. 1946, August 21, Treasury report was given at $154.10. 1947, May 26, lawnmower was purchased for $136.73. Kurt Wiegand is one quarter owner since he paid $34.18 towards the mower. 1948 to 1951. No meetings were held for the past four years regarding the Cemetery Association. No reason was given for this. Wow. There's no recording in the minutes of anything that happened or what. Yes. It's just a blank. Very, very interesting. In 1952, the rate of perpetual care raised from $50 to $75, and lots from $30 to $50. Okay. William Wimler donated his shares he is holding in the Cleveland Cooperative. Also noted was only the interest of the perpetual care can be used for expenses. 1953, June 2 meeting scheduled at the cemetery. Cleanup on the cemetery was not completed in the forenoon, so the meeting was held in the evening in the Cleveland Church. 1954, May 10, the cemetery board is exhausted. So by action, John Lutze was elected president for the duration of one year. Mary Lutze, Mrs. Oscar, Secretary for three years, and Alfred Haunstein, Treasurer for two years. June 14, special meeting called. President Lutze made new plan regarding size of lots. His plan was accepted. Okay. 1959, May 11, a $3 charge per grave will be charges for graves with no perpetual care. 1961, May 9th, payment was made to several people for work that they completed. 1962, payment of $10 to treasurer job. Voted to pay John Lutze $100 in years 1962 and 1963 for building the shed. I believe this would be the shed this is the shed. standing by. Okay. Ned Hahn <laughs> received $1.25 per hour for mowing the cemetery. In May, 1963, May 13, Mrs. Mary Lutze passed away. John Lutze declined the presidency. Ned Hahn accepted the secretary position. Lester Fiedler, the president position. The Ned Hahn boy, boys will mow the cemetery. In 1965, May 17, Lewis Wiegan family consented to take care of mowing the cemetery. 1971. May 15, the storage shed was painted. In 1972, May 13, price increase, $30 to $50 per lot, $15 per grave to $25, and perpetual care, $15 to $25. In 1975, May 10, caretaker salary increased to $2.50. That must be per, per hour. hour. <laughs> 1977, May 14, caretaker increased to $3 an hour. Alfred Haunstein retired. 1978, May 20, perpetual care was still $50. 1979, May 12, the board will look into liability insurance. Moving up to 1980, May 3, John Wiegand became president to complete Lester Fiedler last year. Our president is John Wiegand today, and he was, it says here, it started in 1980. Well, we well. should give him a lot I'll of give him a hand there. That, that, that's a long duration. Long Good job, John. Good job. Thank you. <laughs> okay. 1981, the caretaker's salary was increased to $3.50. 1982, Single graves were raised to $100, and the caretaker was raised to $5 per hour. 
1983, May 14th, John Wiegand, Acting Secretary for Arnold Hoon. Arnold Hoon has to be relieved of his caretaker duties for the past 10 years and the secretary position of 12 years. John Wiegand agreed to become caretaker at $5 per hour and secretary for the time being. 1984, May 5th, Earl Stoltenberg reported that of, as of April 30th, 1984, the Federal Trade Commission no longer requires burial vaults to be used. The bylaws were amended that burial vaults need to be used at this cemetery. The driveways were blacktopped by Rasmussen for $3,959. 1984, May 5, Association received $15,000 from the Alfred Fisher Estate. John Wiegand elected president for a three-year term. Harley Haupt, electric secretary for a three-year term. That's when I became, be, began my term as secretary. And could you give that year one more time, please? 1984. Okay, thank you. 1988, the cemetery sign was discussed. In 10-14-88, a new sign was installed at a cost of $1,275. And this would be the sign that you see on... Okay, could you just hold it up there for a minute there, Arlie? I don't know if you can get it very clear, maybe. There you go, there you go. Excellent. And that's a granite stone, I believe? Yes. Okay, very good. Thank you, Arlie. Continue if you'd like, please. Okay, in 1989, Helen Hahn filled the vacancy of treasurer. Arnold Gupsch died on February 4th, 19, February 1st, 1989. Helen elected treasurer for a three-year term. President John Wiegand reported on progress of straightening of the old graves at a cost of $400. John Wiegand will try to paint the shed and do other repairs. 1990, we're moving right up now. Right up to the present time. May 5th, the roof needs replacement on shed and also it was decided to side the shed. Caretaker salary was increased to $7 per hour. 1995, the Veterans of Foreign Wars Legion will not hold memorial services anymore on Memorial Day after 14 years. They said it was because of low attendance. We okay. felt rather bad about this, but All right. it was their decision to do so. Okay. And that comes out. 1996, Helen Hahn would like to resign as treasurer. And the caretaker salary was raised to $8.50 per hour to be reviewed at a regular basis. 1997, May 10th, Melbourne Yannick was elected the treasurer. Okay. 1999, on May 1st, the driveways were resealed at a cost of $510 by Klein Asphalt. Three trees were removed at a cost of $2,150. This also included other pruning of the trees on the cemetery. Okay. 2001, caretaker salary was increased to $9 per hour. Okay. I believe that's at present. <coughs> we still have the same. All right. In 2003, the Cleveland Gun Club was asked not to shoot during a funeral. And we were told there are about 350 graves on the cemetery. Oh. The earliest being 1861 and 25 veterans' graves. Okay. The flagpole was erected for memorial money by Zabel Monuments for $479.95. In 2005, Melvin Yenick resigned as treasurer, and Diane Hesketh, the lady here on my okay. right, was then elected to uh, okay. replace him. All right, very good. And in 2006, on May 6th, we had a price change per lot from $100 a lot to $200 per lot. Okay. This means $400 for a couple. All right. 
These are all very brief summaries and Wonderful. it's just some of the things that took place in action with the Cemetery Association. Okay. Okay, very good. Well done, Arling. And uh, maybe we'll just continue for a moment. Now, who put this all together? I did. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and with Arlie's notes and John's notes. Okay. So they had the rough notes, if you will, and you kind of put it together with your computer, perhaps? Or how yes, did you do? on the computer. Wonderful and job. And I see Ken. we made some corrections, so maybe I'll run another copy yeah. with the corrections. Someday. Okay. Very well done. And we didn't get to our treasurer yet. And who is that, please? Back over here. Okay. Diane Haskell. Thank you. Diane, can I move you over to by in near John there a little bit? Because uh, i got to get the sky out of the picture. Thank you. There we go. Good job. All right. And uh, your duties at the, as a treasurer, and again, how long have you been that? Since 2005. Okay. Um, this is my third year. Okay. And my duties are to um, manage the checkbooks and the CDs that are uh, invested for the upkeep of the cemetery. Okay. Uh, I pay the bills and I do the um, filing the, the taxes for the um, salary paid to the caretaker. Okay. Okay. If I may ask, I know like churches, they don't pay any, what, income tax or property tax or what is that? Is there anything like that with a, a cemetery? No, the cemetery is tax exempt. They are tax exempt. Okay. The and taxes we pay are just on salary paid to the all right, very good. Now, the other folk that are here today, and are they volunteers or are you elected to your position to be on the board of directors? Is that possible? Okay, does anybody know on that thing? John? Okay. John, we, we actually don't have a board of directors as such up here. I know that some cemeteries do. Okay. We just have the regular three offices, president, treasurer, secretary. Okay. So these other young ladies that are here today, they're interested in the cemetery? Right. Okay. And they sort of like volunteer a little bit, or how does that work? Well, it, anybody can come to their annual meeting. Oh, okay. So All right. why they're here. They, they have relations buried up here. I see. Okay, very good. Sir. Yes, sir. My name is Arlie Haupt. Thank you, Arlie. I like that. <laughs> and we like to have as many people as we come can come to these meetings. Yes. And John and his mother and Diane and I, we take turns. You might say we, we ask different ones to attend Yeah. so that we don't have to just make decisions ourselves. I understand. When yes. things are done, we like to have a contingency of, oh, usually we get nine to ten people here. Okay. And we like to ask them for their input. We like them to make the motions, sure. the seconds, sure. and to proceed with the business. Okay. So that it's not just the officers. That's right. We keep them informed, and they in turn can inform other people. And it's a good relationship that we have with all those that come. Okay. Sure. It has thinned down quite a bit in the last years. We have a lot of deaths. All right. But now they're permanent residents. That's right. Here. That's right. They don't yeah. just come to the meetings on a first uh, week in May. Right. Every I, year I, I know what you mean. Yes. A uh, oh. question from Jerry O'Neill, the videographer. We, Charlie and myself, toured the cemetery a little bit while you were holding your meeting. And we noticed that uh, you're heading to the east, I believe, with uh, your monuments. Uh, is there additional land uh, out there to be used to increase the size of this cemetery? Go right ahead, sir. Who wants to handle that one? John Wiegan. Thank you, John. The only land that we have, other than going to the east, we do have land available going to the west on this side of the cemetery where the sign is down there. Oh, okay. We, we can go that way yet. All right, so okay. We're, we're okay for a little while yet. As far as going east, well, you'd be going downhill that yes, way. And, yes, uh, yes. I know what you mean. I don't know if the, you know, I'd like to make a comment about this cemetery, and it's wonderful that you've built this up on such a nice high knoll. It really adds to it, and it maintains a, a nice serene cemetery, I gotta say. So whoever made the choice of purchasing this land did a good job. <laughs> okay. 
Yes, Charlie, you've got a yes, question, Charlie sir. Bauer, I just have one question. Before you were talking about the veterans, how far back do you go? Uh, are you got veterans here older than the Civil War, World War I, or, or do you know how far back? Uh, I can. Okay, John, we'll John we can, thank you, John. We have eight of them, eight veterans here from the Civil War. That is as far back as we go. Okay. And we have one from the Spanish-American War. We believe we have two from World War One. Okay. There's several of them from World War Two and, and Korea. Okay. All of these veterans that are up here <coughs> died later on, not war related. Okay, I see what you mean. There, there were none, not children actually. Okay. Very good. Very good point, John. Okay, uh, anybody got any questions? Yeah, there we go. Thank you, Kathy. Go right ahead. Kathy Sixel, and um, I understand that this cemetery is very good financially, that they're not having problems because many uh, cemeteries are in trouble. They don't have any money. Um, how do you account for that? Is it a uh, little bit of spending, or aren't there many uh, expenditures? Okay. Okay, John, you're on the hot seat, ready. Oh, maybe this Put the treasure. Treasure. There we go. Thank you. Uh, well, I guess. Could I have your identification one more Diane time? Diane Heska. Thank you, Diane. Before my time, there were a number of um, what would you call them endowments or, or gifts? Gifts to the cemetery that have been invested in CDs. Okay. And a lot of our expenses are covered by the. Um, Interest. interest off of those CDs. Okay, but wonderful. Of course, costs go up yes. and interest rates don't. So we've been able to, to manage. All right. But there's some dipping into those funds. I can understand. To cover expenses as they come up. Sure, very good. And that's my phone. That's your phone. <laughs> <laughs> don't go away though, please. <laughs> okay, anybody else like to add a right. item or two yet? Yes, John, go right ahead, please. John Wiegand. Yeah. I unfortunately can't take credit for the location of this cemetery, but I'm glad they picked it here. Uh, this is, for the most part, pretty easy digging here. Okay. Uh, that's not a problem now anymore. We get a grave digger injury. Some St. Nazians does it. Okay. But years ago, when everything was dug with shovels, uh, they were very happy. That's fairly light soil. Soil was there. There's yeah. a lot of sandy ground up here. And that Good. Was you're right, it was a good, good, good choice. choice here. Good choice. Uh, just a few notes about the report that was just read off. Yes. There were a couple things I wanted to clarify in there. I mean, not mistakes, just clarifications. Uh, Miss, you mentioned Mrs. Oscar Lutze, who was an officer up here, died. He said 1963. I checked the grave over there. It was 1962. The reason why it says 63 is because they re probably replaced her that year. Mm -hmm. I think she died in 63. Uh, the pruning and the trees getting cut down, I, th I think it says 1999. That would have been 1998. It's the 10-year anniversary this year of doing that. Okay. It cost us over $2,100 to do it. It, it wasn't just cutting three trees. That's as the minutes may suggest, we did a lot of pruning up here. We had Chris Lewis from Manitowoc. Okay, yes. And it ran into uh, quite a lot more money than we would have liked, but uh, it was a thorough job that they yeah. did. They were up here four days. Really? We cut three down and pruned everything else. Wow. But that is 10 years ago, 1998, and uh, uh, some of the trees are getting to that point where we're going to have to go after them again. Yeah. And that's just the way trees are. And they got the right equipment to approach it properly, yeah, too. If, if we can't do it ourselves, right. I mean, that's the route we have to go. All right. On the names of officers, it mentions in there, Louis Wiegand took over an office in 1910. I want to clarify that. Uh, not my father, that was my great-grandfather. Oh, he was also okay. Wiegand. I was wondering about uh, that. Yeah, <laughs> my father was born in 1921, so the 1910 thing, that was my great-grandfather. He so in other words, if I may interrupt again, we have uh, the third, uh, the second, the third, and all that type of thing. Wiegands, is that yeah. correct? John Wiegands? You're right. Uh, Could you backtrack and go I, one I more can time? I over again, yeah. My great-grandfather, whose name was Louis Wiegand, the one that became an officer up here in 1910. Yep. 
He died in 1932, and one of his sons, Kurt Wiegand, took over as a pretty much okay. the presidency and the caretaking, or at least seat, seeing to it that it got done. I don't know if he did ever did all of it, but he had a seat to it. He was president up here in, from 32 until 1953 when he died. Okay. And then we had, I believe, John Lutze took over for a number of years until 1963, and then Lester Fiddler. 63 until 1980 and then I got it okay my father who was not an office holder but he has been a caretaker up here with us clipping lawn his father before him I other than helping up here once in a while I don't believe he ever had an office okay but it was Lewis the grand, great grandfather Kurt who was my great uncle and then and I'm an officer, so there have been uh -huh. three of us wow. in officers. Fantastic. And the other one I want to clarify, William Hoon as an officer in, in 1913, there were there was a William Hoon and then there was a grandson William Hoon, the one that some of you know, the grandson who died in about 1982, that would have been his grandfather who was the officer up here. So oh, okay. there were two William Hoons too. Oh. <laughs> so that gets a little confusing. Okay. You know, they used to use the same family name a number of times, but uh, okay. that's what happened. And that William Hoon, that the officer, he's the one that did quite a bit of the writing in German uh, up and from whenever he took over in 13, I believe, okay. to 1934, and well, that time frame, he's the one with a very nice handwriting. Yeah. Wow. Obviously, he, he wasn't the first one, uh, but okay. he, he had it for many years. And, as long as you're speaking of German and ancestry, we see a few stones, Charlie and I did, where it has a sprig of wheat or something in carved into the stones, and mainly over in the tall stone area. So we were wondering, is that something uh, pertaining to the German tradition, or is there, you know about that at all? I, John Wiegand, I, I'm not totally sure. I would, I would think that it had something to do with the German tradition. I, okay. I'm not really we sure just saw that and we yeah, thought I, we'd I, ask. I'm not really sure okay. uh, why they did it, but uh, okay. it, it was probably a, a German tradition type thing. Okay. Well, uh, as far as, uh, I guess uh, we're holding up a little on the hours here and everybody's standing all this while, it's kind of tough. Uh, any final comments you folks would like to make? I'll, I'll start with the treasure here. Any, anything at all that you'd like to just indicate at the last thing here? Um, well, being a, a transplant to the area from the Chicago area, okay, um, it's just been a joy to be a part of this association and to get to know the history of the area, um, get to know the other members of the board and the, the members okay. who come to the meetings. It's just been a delight okay. and I really enjoy it. If I may ask a little private question, uh, have you been in uh, sort of secretarial work or treasury work in a different occupation perhaps? Um, I've, my husband has his own business and I've always done the books for him. Okay. And I'm also treasurer for the Christian Home Educators of Sheboygan. Oh, okay. Well, you got a lot of credentials to you. Got a lot of fingers and a lot of pies. <laughs> Wonderful. Good for you. Okay, and uh, we'll go to this gentleman here who would uh, like to make a final comment perhaps on his uh, thoughts at this time. Go right ahead, John. John Wiegand, once again, the president. I, I enjoy the role I'm playing also, and there's a responsibilities and once in a while. It, it, it isn't always convenient, but I yeah. do enjoy what I'm doing. And I, okay. I will be doing it for God, another three years, God willing. Okay, wonderful. Well, you know, at this age of time, uh, you know, people have got activities and not always able to take care of other duties along with that. So it's wonderful that you've got time for this. I appreciate it. Thanks a lot, John, too. And uh, Mr. Hulp there, he'd like to introduce himself and tell us a little few last words on his part. Go right ahead, Ed. You're back to me. Yes, My sir. name is Arlie Hulp. Thank you, Arlie. I don't know what I would say too much. I enjoy my work with it also. I good. have very good officers to work with. Well, good. Uh, a little history of the past. I was born and raised in Newton. Okay. Town of Newton. All right. And uh, I was five years old. We moved to Manitowoc. Okay. And uh, when I was 12 years old, I guess, or for 12 years, some uh, 
How do I got to get it right now? <laughs> and in 1948, we moved out to the town of Centerville on Point Creek Road. Okay. My parents. All right. And uh, as I grew up there, I met my wife who lived on Union Road at the time in uh, Carl Eidritz Place where the Freist Farms are. Yep, yep. And we met, we got married in 1954. Okay. And we have our gravestone over to the corner there. All right. Uh, we did that in 1976. We had a stillborn child. Okay. And the wife and I, we did own lots at the Knollwood Memorial Gardens out of Manitowoc. Yes, sir. Okay. And we lived here since, I say, we moved out here in 48, and I grew up around here. We felt we wanted to be here, and we came to this cemetery, and we bought our lots here. Okay. And we have our infant son buried there, and my wife was just laid to rest last week Saturday. Oh, my gosh. On May 3rd, we put her in the ground over there. She was cremated. Okay. She died on February 2nd of this year. Okay. And she was cremated, and then we did the, the burial last Saturday. Okay. Well, my sympathy to you, Arlie. Well, I, I thank you very much. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but it, it's it's good that is, you're maintaining it. And if I may ask uh, a, a secret question, how old are you, Arlie? I am 74. 74. Very good. And I know you were an active gentleman in the church as well in uh, your younger days and so forth, so we all appreciate that too. Yes, I was. I, uh, I taught Sunday school for 30 years. Yes. Very proud of that. Yeah. Those are some of the best years of my life that okay. I recollect. And okay. Go back to those years. They were wonderful. Okay. I'm going to walk over here one more time and finalize. John, your age at this point in time, are you, you're not at retirement yet, I presume. John Wiegan, uh, no, I'm not there yet. <laughs> I'm 58. 50 what? I'm 58. 58, okay, and well. Getting younger by the day. Yes, you are. <laughs> well, you're looking good there. And if I may intrude upon your uh, age, please, I'd appreciate it. I'm 53. 53 also. And uh, you indicated that you lived in Illinois mm -hmm. and uh, so forth. and. Uh, uh, any particular part of Illinois that we could uh, relate Evanston, to? Evanston, Illinois. Evanston? Just north of Chicago. Okay. Where Northwestern University is. Okay. All right. My well, husband and I were both born and raised in, in that area. Okay. Up here. Okay. Well, we thank you folks for taking the time to provide some information on this important piece of property here in uh, Centerville and uh, for taking the time out of your busy day. And I know you've uh, spent a good hour at that uh, meeting that you had and we intruded upon you in that point. But again, thanks so much for providing the Greater Centerville Historians some uh, good history of uh, the things that took place here. And Charlie, I'll come back to you for a moment. <laughs> Any last words that you would like to indicate? Well, I would like to thank the, the group here too. And, and one of the ladies standing in the center here was my neighbor. Really? And I didn't recognize her when she was there. Of course, I didn't see her in a long time, that Mrs. Klesik. Okay. I, and I see her son, Paul, all the time at the different historical things because okay. he really likes history and that. Sure. So we went on the corner and we had a little visit. A little visit. All right with <laughs> <laughs> we'll tolerate that, Charlie. Okay. And again, from uh, Jerry O'Neill, the videographer, again, I thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy days. Thank you, folks. And we thank you. You're okay. Mm -hmm. I'm with Arlie Halt here, and he's just showing me his book. Sec is it a secretary book of minutes? Is that correct? Yes. And he's just showing me some of the beautiful writing that people in the past have had here. And he wants to show me something in German. This whole study. Okay, we've got a German preamble to the constitution of this group. And it's written in beautiful German. Oh, gorgeous. But now they got to have somebody to interpret that. And that would be a wonderful thing. And you get okay. the, the next page, too, here. Uh, and Ar Arlie is pointing out that a Carl Tapel's name is at the very bottom, and it could have been that he, in his day, wrote Here, this. see, it says clear by my thumb. Yeah. Working with uh, Arlie helped, and he's showing me a page where they were comparing, is that prices, is that correct, yeah. Arlie? And they went to various church uh, cemetery. cemetery lot price survey. Okay. And uh, I'll start at the top there a little bit. It looks like Johannes Cemetery and St. John's Graveyard Association and Grace Haven Cemetery, St. Wendell's 
St. John's Newtonburg, Trinity Liberty, St. Mark's Dairyland, St. Paul's Union and MM, Trinity, Howard's Grove, Seamers, Highway 42, and the last one is St. James Spring Valley. So they went through and tried to compare what they were looking for as far as pricing of lots. And back in 1998, is that correct, Arlie? Yes. Okay. Well, again, Arlie, I thank you for providing all the good information. We appreciate it. Well, you're very welcome.